business horror stories. Small businesses are the soul of America. And this is where they tell their stories. Brought to you by Proven.com. And we are live here with Small Business War Stories, Episode 2. And today I'm here with Paul Hedrick, who is a founder of uh, Tecovas Boots. How, uh, can, can you correct my pronunciation on that? How do you actually say the, uh, the brand? I say it Tecovas. Tecovas. You know, it with the accent on the second syllable, but I think it's up to interpretation. Got it. <laughs> okay, it's, it's like we're talking about songs. It's in, in the ear of the beholder. And today uh, we're going to talk a, a little bit about, about boots in general and about how to start a manufacturing business and what, and what that means. And then we'll also uh, get a little bit into, uh, into Paul's favorite type of music uh, uh, and uh, you, you'll see what that is in a little bit. Uh, so yeah, first of all, welcome to Small Business War Stories. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Uh, so maybe tell me a little bit, and I'm sure you're used to answering this question, but what, uh, what inspired you to start a boot company and, uh, and how, did you, how did this all get started? Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, uh, a lot of things. So I, I would say, uh, I guess I can go back a little bit to my last job. I was, I was working at a consumer private equity firm. Essentially, uh-huh. my job there was to help run and operate uh, our consumer businesses. So these were fashion companies, CPG, you know, yep. candy. Actually, a candy company is what I spent the most wow. time on, oddly enough. But okay. Anyway, I knew there that I really, I after working there, I wanted to build my own thing i wanted to be my own boss and it was kind of one part logical um and that i wanted to be my own boss i thought about the path to being your own boss either working for someone else for a while and taking over a company um and i got a little impatient and thought about the the easier path to get to be your own boss and uh and kind of the the illogical uh i guess desire to just want to create something from scratch and build something and um, see a physical product out there. The more I started yeah. thinking about that, the more I got got romanticized by the idea. Of course, of just like something physical, something tangible. We'll yeah. talk a little bit about that a little bit more in a minute and what that and what that means. Uh, but let, let's start something maybe a fun fact. What's something that most people don't know about the boot business about about making boots? Yeah, well, well, one thing that I certainly didn't know was how big the industry was. Um, that's actually what opened my eyes. We had been looking at investing in a boot in a boot business at my last job. Wow, so okay. I had a bit of an inside look in the yeah. industry and way bigger than I thought. It's a multi-billion dollar U.S. industry. So that's one yeah. thing. Um, second thing is uh, that I learned pretty quickly looking into it was that pretty much all high-end boots these days in the last 20 years are yeah. made in not only one town in the world, but one street in one town in Leon, Guanajuato, Mexico. Is that and right? Yeah, so that's the first thing I did when I quit my old job is I bought a ticket to Leon and scheduled some cold uh, yeah, meetings with manufacturers. Wow, wow, that must have been interesting. What? Uh, how did they receive you when you when you made it there? Yeah, so there was at least one warm intro, so that was fine, and it, it was easy to get my feet in there. And, yeah. and frankly, one thing that I sort of regret not doing is asking for more help. Um, okay. I really thought that I could just figure it out all on my own and you know, kind of a gringo going down there. I mean, sure. I, I speak Spanish, so it made things a lot easier, but um, most people were pretty we receptive. Should, we should have done this interview in Spanish then. See, claro que sí. Yeah, um, they're, they're pretty receptive to American business owners. I've seen okay. a lot of the American brands there do really well. So, of course, I had to pitch them a, lot, a little bit on a dream since we didn't exist yet as sure. a brand. But really, they're great people. It's all these, they're all family-owned factories. Um, great. And they really know their business. And you so. make all all uh, cowboy western style boots, right? Yeah, we are we are aspiring to be the uh, best western boot brand on the market. So um, we also aspire to be the best value boot brand. We're we're charging uh, a lot less for our boots than most of our competitors would charge for the similar quality boots. Okay. Due to our business model, but really our goal yeah. is to be the best. Beautiful. I'm Classic excited. I, you know, I, we were talking earlier. I love cowboy boots, and I'll be heading down to your showroom. And I, I don't, ha- I don't own any ropers, so I'm, uh, uh, I'm gonna a great to, roper. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna add to, a roper to the to the collection. Um, so, do, have you had any funny or interesting stories? I mean, obviously, it's it's got to be you got you have to run across a whole bunch of interesting things that happen, uh, you know, around around boots. So, what does anything come to mind that's uh, that's happened with the with the boots? Yeah, I, I wish there were more funny times. I, <laughs> I, I would say usually when things go well, it's because it's when nothing funny is going on. Yeah. But um, there's certainly been some some really uh, some things I found really interesting. It's it's 
a lot of people think it's really cool um, sure. that you're running a boot company. So yeah. we've had some interesting opportunities that pop up along the way. Yeah. Uh, we got invited to sell boots at Willie Nelson's ranch last year. Wow. Which was How really was that? Fun. Tell me more about that. Yeah, so they actually end up running a um, a little bit of a festival uh, sort of thing during South by Southwest here okay. in Austin in March wow. um, every year, and you know just chance happenings uh, have, have been really fortuitous for our brand so far. We yeah. ran into I ran into a guy at a co working space who thought we were cool, and yeah, they wanted a boot company to come in and sell boots at this festival, and you know happened to be a Willie Nelson's personal property that's it was awesome. really cool how was that what where did, I mean what's the place I mean let's not give away the location but what uh, <laughs> what what's this place like well it's out in West Austin uh, near Lake Travis uh, it's awesome he's got about make a right where sorry yeah <laughs> I think you can actually find it. It's it's called Luck, Texas. They okay. actually, and there's actually an old Western movie set on okay. his property that, they, cool. that takes uh, where this festival takes place. So that was cool. You know, it's always fun to. Did you get to meet Willie? No, I actually didn't. Uh, we get to we got to see him. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, the, the 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 day that it happened, there was really bad weather, and the, even the fire department came and made everyone wow. evacuate, and okay. it was. So that's the thing. Even the even the good parts are always oh, something always goes wrong. Something's always <laughs> interesting. That that's what makes it all worth it, right? Yeah. Yeah. I saw Willie at uh, Austin City Limits his last this last uh, go around, and uh, as the sun was setting, it was it was powerful. Oh, he stuff. still got it. Yeah. Oh, he still got it for sure. Um, yeah, man. When he sinks Georgia. Uh, but yeah, the, um, the let's talk a little bit more about how you're different than a lot of uh, a lot of boot companies. So a lot of sure. boot companies sell through networks of uh, distributors and stores and you have a showroom here in Austin but your business yes. is direct to consumer. Can you maybe tell me a little bit more about what that means and why did you make that choice? Of course. Um, yeah, so we are actually the only nationally, you know, national direct to consumer cowboy boot brand. Um, we were really, I was inspired by a lot of other brands in other categories who've yep. done this business model. Uh, Warby Parker, Bonobos, Tuft & Needle. Yep. You know, a lot of these companies have made big impact on their categories. So that was my main inspiration, so that was the main reason I went after it. But man, the real value is the value that you can provide for the customer. So yeah. the day that you decide that you don't want to sell to retail, and that's the decision we made on day one, yeah. you end up getting all this pricing flexibility. You don't have to leave room. I mean, you, if you go out to a store, if you go to the boot store in Austin, the sure. boot store anywhere really in the country, I've a physical there. store, yep. uh, you're paying for a boot half the price of which is a margin that's going to that retailer. Right. You have uh, to pay to keep the lights on on that exactly. location. Right. Essentially, the, the way the industry works is the, the brands will make the boots. They'll pretty much double up the markup of okay. the cost of the boot to sell as a wholesale price to the yep. retailer. And then they'll double that price again. So yep. it's kind of four or five times the cost that it, you know it took to make the boot. Yeah. We literally just cut out that second step charge that wholesale price straight to customers. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. So customers can get a top-notch boot for maybe a little bit over half the price of what they would pay for. Yeah, exactly. Store. Yeah, and that was the other thing is we, we could have gone, you know, where in the market do we want to land quality-wise? Yeah. We decided to go right to the to the high end yeah. to compete with the boots that are people are selling for yeah. five hundred to a thousand dollars. Wow! Um, because that's where we felt the most value would be for the customer. Um, right. You know, so now your boots have a great reputation. I mean, they're beautiful boots, and, and they have a reputation to be very comfortable, which I'm about to find out this afternoon. Uh, but uh, what in the beginning there must have been some challenges. So what's yeah. the difference between the way you made your first boot and the way you're making your boots today? And maybe. Uh, Today you're on small business war stories, but uh, you know a few years from now you're going to be on you know dominating boot brand uh, war stories. So what, what what's going to change uh, in your manufacturing going forward? Yeah, great question. Um, so our our philosophy with our product is very simple. We're always going to be improving, and yeah. if, we, if I ever find out about a way that boots can be improved, or some construction method, or some material that we're not using that's better like we're going to look into it and we're yeah. going to actually decide if it's better not only for us but for most more importantly for our customers yeah if they're going to find it more comfortable or if the boots are going to last longer so you know i would say at the beginning we we've always done our best to find the best materials the best construction methods but you know along the way you know a year and a half of full production mode selling to customers yeah. we've certainly found specific ways you know there's they end up being small things but yeah when you so what's one up, thing that maybe you did in the very beginning that you no longer do yeah good question i, I mean they're kind of boring technical things really for the most part um put, well, put me in the boot factory yeah. and tell me well I, i'll give you one a good example yeah. so at the beginning we 
I, I really wanted it all. I wanted our boots to be the most comfortable boot in the market. I yeah. wanted it to be the best constructed boot in the market, the longest lasting boot in the market. And yeah. one thing we learned is that there's always going to be a little bit of a balance between things. So, um, for instance, there's a there's a heel cap you can use, and it's all it's made of rubber, and there's there are grades to how comfortable versus durable that is. Sure. And we've learned that you know first we went for more for comfort, and then we realized that people are going to they're willing to sacrifice a little more comfort in the heel cap specifically for it to last longer and not have to replace it after use. So that's one thing we changed. Yeah. It's the material that we use for the leather, it's all really supple. They're really like we have a very strong reputation of being the most comfortable boots in the market right out of the box. Yeah. Um, but we also realized that you could actually make the boots a little bit more durable. Yeah. Um, and this is like the difference between lasting for years versus a decade. Yeah. <laughs> that kind of thing. I mean, it's always yeah. going to be good, but by adding a little bit of a lining that takes out some of that, yeah. you know, kind of glove-like feel. Of course. But uh, yeah. those are some of the, it's all about so balance You, you want to build a boot where somebody actually can say, I have shoes older than you, son. Yeah. Well, we <laughs> love that. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. yeah I've resold, uh, I mean, boots, a good pair of boots you can resold many times. Of course. And, uh, get yeah. a, lot, a lot of wear from them. So you you had a past uh, life before the even private equity life as as a consultant, That's right. and you saw lots of different types of businesses there. Uh, from what I know of the consulting business, mm -hmm. um, and you decided to go make a physical product, like you were saying, because you wanted that tangible uh, thing to hold that that you know that that you had a say in, in, in putting together, designing, and making. What are maybe some of the pros and cons of deciding? Uh, maybe for some of our listeners who are thinking about uh, starting something. Something that's physical versus something that's maybe, you know, either software or a service business or something like sure. that. Sure. Yeah. Well, for me personally, I didn't know a lot about technology, so I was a little bit limited to my, you know, it would have been a steeper learning curve just to, to start a, you know, a non-physical product company. But, you know, uh, I, I, the big pros of having a physical product is kind of something I've already, just, I've already mentioned, which is it's just really cool to hold something. It's, it's a little bit, and it also makes the business simpler at the end of the day. You know, we make a widget and we sell it. We yeah. make a boot and we sell it. That is, at the end of the day, the, the whole business. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's nice that it's that simple. Uh, the problem is you get a lot of the kind of old school problems when you're in an old school manufacturing sure. world. Sure, tell me more about those. You can get delays, you know, you, if, if there's a product defect that ever happens, and luckily we've been, you know, we haven't had anything major happen, but, um, you know, it's really hard to correct those. You can't just yep. write a... You can't just like send an update out to your users and fix a bug right away. You yep. might have inventory out there. You might have people that are complaining. Yeah. You know, let alone there's always if someone is wearing something or using something, there's always you know you always have to make sure that it's really safe and that it's you know we it's a boot for at the end of the day our, our product can't really be that dangerous. But yeah, you know there's some. Oh, I don't products. know. I've seen I've seen some <laughs> dancing going on at White Horse. So oh yeah. <laughs> Might yeah. indicate otherwise. Yeah, you might slip and fall. We, yeah. we, we make leather bottom boots, which are way go. better for dancing and boot scooting. There you go. Now. So if you go on country <laughs> dancing or any kind of dancing, really, uh, the boots boots are the way to go. So let's actually, so to, to build on that a little bit, um, so you recently added a new line of boots that are ostrich uh, boots. You used to have just, uh, what, what kind of leather were calf they? Calfskin is calf what skin. the rest of our line is. Great. So calfskin, and then you just added the new... Uh, Beautiful ostrich leather boots. Uh, what does that mean for you as a company? How, so how does that affect your your production, your inventory, your logistics, and and also how does that affect your brand from going from a one uh, you know product to a yeah brand more? yeah I'll start with that because I, I think it really is our you know it's been our goal to have a really curated line. We don't actually one of the things we do about our business we don't offer personalization. We don't offer a lot of toe or heel or shaft options like a lot of people are used or to. Or your initials on the. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. I mean, I mean, the reason we do that is because we just wouldn't be able to offer the same value we did if we were doing one off here, there, and it's you know the footwear is actually tough because there's so many sizes that the yeah. the skew complexity that you know the number of units that we have to keep you know on hand is yeah. is kind of crazy. So yeah, anything we do to simplify that is better. That being said. Um, we really wanted to cement ourselves as a high-end brand. Okay. And, you know, if you're a boot brand and you want to be high-end, yeah. you know, the way that people like to expand is through exotic leathers and people who are, you know, quote-unquote boot people. Yeah. They like to have, they like to expand their lineup, not really through colors, but, yeah, and they do that too, but yeah. through leathers and having cool leathers. And okay. the big thing for us uh, that, that was the, the nice, a nice deciding factor was that exotic leathers happen to be really expensive and other yeah. boot brands. 
So it gave us even bigger opportunity to show how just how much of a gap that those brands were really charging when they're upselling, you know, upselling the whole, you know, wholesale retail market. Yeah. And so, so those those boot brands that shall remain unnamed are probably not excited about that. No, I, I can't imagine they are. We've been trying to stay under the radar at least yeah. from the, you know, staying out of their way and such. You know, the, the reality is no one's ever comparing our boots side by side unless they've got two you know, internet windows open. We're never sure on shelf with them. So. That part's a little interesting. I, you yeah. know, we sometimes wonder what, um, you know, how we're really being perceived by our competition, but we're not too worried about it right now. How do you now. want to be perceived? Uh, well, uh, ideally, they they do, they just let us grow. <laughs> 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 ideally, they 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 let us do our thing and they don't respond at all. But um, yeah, I mean, to the consumer, certainly want it. We want to be viewed as a real alternative to the more expensive brands, and and uh, we really have, I think, done that. Uh, okay. We've converted a lot of customers from. Uh, some of those high-end brands that have been around for a long time and charge a lot of money for their boots and cool uh, if you just go through including me yeah yeah (laughs) yeah yeah. cool so how do you that's a great uh second to the next question how do you want to grow in the next 10 years and what do you want people 10 years from now uh to think when they hear you know the name Tacovas and and what 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 is it that um and again uh related to that how will that affect your production your manufacturing and your brand and your product line yeah, so good question. Uh, I can talk about the the kind of the soft brand related uh, perception things first. So, yeah. um, like I said, we really want to be considered the best boot brand out there. Um, but more importantly, we want to be the one that we want to be the brand out there that's democratized uh, high end boots, so to speak. So uh-huh. uh, we've we've made them affordable, you know, for the you know for people that don't want to pay, you don't have, you know, they don't want to spend a week's pay on a pair of boots. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think we can do that uh, by offering consistent quality and really focusing on, like I said, simplifying our lineup, always being uh, high end without sacrifice, you know, without getting too complicated. Yeah. Um, but you know, ten years from now, uh, I really, I don't think it's out of the question to, con- you know, for us to reach that goal of being what's considered the best boot brand out there, but really the best boot brand that has the consumer in mind. We, we we're, we're all about consumer experience, customer value, and. Um, we're not going to be relying on you know some hundred hundred fifty year old heritage. We know okay. that that's that's the advantage of the other brands. They're yeah. always going to have that. Yeah. Um, for us, we're the people who are saying, hey, we have the fresh perspective. Cool. Um, we're going to reinvent a classic category. Uh, we're going to actually bring stuff back to the basics. You know, we're going to you know we want our style to be stylish 20, 30 years ago as yeah. well as today as well as 20, 30 years from now. So we're trying to be a little bit trend neutral. We're actually yeah. there's some there's that's some great. style trends out there that we're not actually uh, adhering to right yeah. now even though there's a lot of noise and a lot of customer feedback asking us to so we're politely you. declining <laughs> i hear you i hear you uh, so let's talk a little bit more you know related to that uh, we were talking about music earlier right and uh, your favorite record of all time happens to be up on my wall it's uh, yes. towns van zandt's uh, live at the old quarter uh which is a really soulful um uh, performance and, and we were talking about how uh, your boots are being, uh, you know, a lot of musicians love your boots and, and you're working with the music community a lot. Tell, tell me a little bit more about that. So I'm going to assume that if you, any musician in history could wear your boots, it would be Towns. Yes. Uh, and, yes. Uh, maybe, maybe, I don't know, maybe Pat Green too. Well, who, maybe who are some of the other folks that, that you admire in the music community and how are you as a boot company getting involved with that? Sure. Good question. Um, yeah, so it's it's. I would say this is a a personal advantage of mine from starting a company is that I I love uh, Texas country music. I love you know Americana, Texas folk music, yep. and songwriters like Towns Van Zandt are some of my favorite um, uh, people out there. But uh, so it was kind of a, a really cool advantage to be able to have license to talk to some of these people and sure. just say, hey, I, we I own a boot <laughs> company. Uh, yeah. Maybe we could work something out here. Cool. Um, I do the same thing with a podcast. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, I, I'd say take advantage of it. That you know, life's in business is all about having fun too. So, yeah, um, yeah we, we've we've limited our our our, act, our actual involvement with uh, music, the music industry, up to this point. But we were really excited about moving forward and you know, gifting artists that we think are really cool. You know, our, our big thing is we don't want to dive into the traditional sponsorship sure. world. Uh, you know, we're, we're a new brand. We're trying to do things a little differently. And yeah. one thing we want to do is we definitely want cool people wearing our boots. Yeah. And man, if you are someone who embodies that Tacovas vibe, yeah. you're, you're classic, you're cool, you're, you're Texan and, yeah. uh, or, or what have you, Tennessean, yeah. you know, we, we, actually majority of our sales are outside of Texas, but, okay. um, you know, we're in and we're, we're happy to give you boots. And so some of the things, you know, we've definitely worked with some of those, uh, 
we've, we've worked with some cool artists so far that are wearing our boots, um, mostly just uh, on unofficial basis. Got it. <laughs> Making sure they have a pair if they want them or need them. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, my favorite two artists that are uh, still alive, you know, uh, yeah. rest in peace towns, uh, would be probably Robert O'Keen and Lyle Lovett. Yeah. Um, Problem with Lyle Lovett, he's a great guy, super nice guy, but he's got uh, the best custom boot connection in the world. Oh, okay. Um, so he's got that song, You're Not From Texas, right? Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's right. You're not from Texas. Yeah. Uh, he's so, still cool. <laughs> yeah. We would love for him to just have a pair in his claws. I don't even care if we ever wore them, but I'd be honored. <laughs> got you. Got you. Okay, cool. And uh, and here in Austin, how is, how is uh, your company becoming a part of the community? And, and related to that... Where do you see Austin going in the next 10 years? It's a vibrant town, changing a lot, growing a lot. Uh, where do you see it? And some people love that. Some people don't love that. And uh, where do you see that going? Yeah, well, I love Austin. And, and you know, I, I grew up in elsewhere in Texas. Uh, yeah. I am a born and raised Texan. I, I chose Austin to move to to start the company because I thought it would be the best fit for me personally and the best fit for the business. And one thing I loved about Austin is that they – they really still, you know, despite all their growth in the last 10 years, and maybe people aren't so happy with uh, all the people from out of state moving in yep. here, but I, for one, don't have a huge problem with it because I don't think Austin has yet lost that vibe of really supporting local businesses, yeah. local brands. Um, I mean, I really think a huge part of what's driven our business in our first year has been just the fact that we're here. Yeah. Um, and that's actually, coming back to the showroom, that's one of the reasons we started the showroom. Okay. Um, so uh, I think... You know, being an online brand, yep. focused brand, you know, we make our boots in Leon, Mexico. We actually have a distribution center in Illinois. Wow. Um, so uh, to a lot of our customers, uh, it, I, we felt like we didn't have as much of an Austin connection as we, we wanted to. So we actually went and, you know, got this house over in East Austin yep. to, to have a stronger connection to the community. And it's been awesome. We've been able to really connect with people physically here in town. Yep. And they can really see that we're here and we're, we're ready to grow with this town. And I think... You know, if you know Austin's all about being cool, music, yeah. being from Texas, but being a little different from the rest of Texas, yeah. and keep gonna, Austin weird, right? Yeah, if you're gonna start a technology-enabled, new age, thinking about things differently, cowboy boot brand, you know, yeah. what better city than Austin? Which yeah. is awesome. So, yeah, I think it's gonna keep growing. Um, I hope it doesn't. I hope it keeps that same local supporting vibe, which I think it will. Yeah. You know, there's so many cool concepts here that aren't somewhere, uh, aren't elsewhere that That's true. are really, you know, homegrown here. And we want to be one of those people, of course, one of those brands, but you know, we're, we're always going to have business everywhere, but yeah, uh, it's my goal to always keep Austin as our number one market. Love it. <laughs> Love it. Awesome. Is there, uh, is there anything else that you want our audience to know about uh, Tacoba? So where, where can people find you and that, you know, anything that we haven't covered so far that you want to share? Yeah, sure. Well, you can definitely find us at our website, our online store, tecovasboots.com. Okay, that's again, T-E-C-O-V-A-S.com. Tecovas Boots. Boots, yeah. sorry. Working on the, yeah. uh, working on the other on URL. On the original. Got it. So yeah. add the boots. If she's Tecovas listening, we're, we're, we're still uh, interested. <laughs> <laughs> I, know. I, I know. I know what you mean. We got the uh, proven.com to quite a bit. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're on social media, on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. You can find us anywhere and email us anytime. We're, you know, we, we pride ourselves on having excellent uh, customer service, customer experience, and uh, yeah, we're there to help. Great. Well, uh, thank you. It was an honor to have uh, Paul Hedrick, founder of Tacova's Boots, with us. I really appreciate your time today. Thank you so Thanks much. A lot. Take care. Yeah. Thank you for listening to Small Business War Stories. If you enjoy the show, share it with a friend or subscribe to our podcast. You can also email us suggestions. Is there a guest you think would be great here? Email us at podcast at proven.com. Small business war stories. Small businesses are the soul of America. And this is where they tell their stories. Proven.com.